Yeah, Neil was saying the other day, three day of installation for the offense, and then obviously, you know, rinse, lather, repeat. So, I mean, are you where you want to be in, I guess, in day two with the installation or behind? No coaches ever ahead. No, we're not going to get behind. We have the, uh, like I said, it's, it's a three day install. We'll install, you know, basically a third of the offense each day and, and then really try to focus on those, that third of the offense on that day. And, uh, and it, and that's a, you know, the reason I always have enjoyed doing that because as a play card, it forces you to get a lot of reps on a lot of plays. Because, you know, for instance, today we had basically one quick game pass, a uh, two drop back passes, and a shot play in. You know what I mean? And so, if you're only choosing from four plays, you got to call them all a lot. And so, so that's kind of the thought behind it. And, and they were different than the days that we the, the, the plays we practiced on Tuesday. And so, um, this was the first time they got a chance to, to to work on these plays against a live defense. And so. Um, there, there's going to be a lot we can clean up. That's always going to be the case. But you hope as, as the spring progresses, um, that the more reps they get at all the plays, the better we get. And so, uh, we'll, you know, as far as install goes, we're we're on day two, and, and tomorrow will be day three, and we're back to on on the fourth day we're back to day one stuff. And and uh, hopefully next Tuesday is better than the past two days. I mean Tuesday, that's the goal, you know. <clears throat> What are you working with them when you've got them alone? Um, what are the, the fundamental things that you're trying to drive home to them right now? You know, I think that, that with quarterbacks, what I believe that like throwing starts with your feet. And uh, if you can be great with your feet, you know, if, 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 if a quarterback's feet are good, the ball usually comes out right. And, and a lot of that's just timing, um, different stuff like that. And, and we got a long ways to go from that standpoint. I think that there's, there's, we can be a lot better. I think they're getting a lot better in drills, but it's got to become habits. It's got to show up, you know, in, in uh, live, live periods. And so um, it's something that we'll, that we'll always work on, uh, no matter what. Uh, that, that's going to be something that we work on a ton is, is footwork. And, and I think that the two places where I think quarterbacks are, are really overcoached position, um, not necessarily like schematically, I think like, mechanically and stuff, everything. Like, there's so much stuff, and there's so many people that, that work with quarterbacks nowadays. I think it's a really overcoached position. I think that you can put too much in their head. Uh, but but I think it's really important that they have a plan with their feet. And the other thing that I think is important is they know the reads. And so, you know, no matter what what's going on, um, that's what we want them to always know is, like, have a plan with my feet, know what my reads are. And if I can do, that, do those two things really, really well, be really disciplined with my feet, be really disciplined with our reads, it gives us a chance to be successful. And uh, that's what, you know, we work a ton with that. And then obviously um, you got to work on it because things aren't always going to go right. You know what I mean? And so um, when, when, when things don't go right, you still got to be able to make a play. And so uh, we'll, we'll work a ton with drops and, and having a plan and throwing on time. And then we'll work on times when, when whatever, something didn't go right, still being able to move and throw the football. And, and those are the things, again, that, it still comes back to feet on that too, though. You know, I mean, you're moving in the pocket. You got to have your feet in a position because when you see something, it's got to be able to throw it now. And if your feet are out of position, you can't do it. And so uh, that's why I think, like everything, like I said, throwing starts with your feet, and, and we got to be great there. Your thought of the quarterbacks? I mean, obviously, Nico very new. Uh, has he looked it? Have the other guys look like they've been in this, a, a system, a college system, longer? What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think they've all three. Shown some, shown some good, and they've all things shown some plenty of room to get better. Uh, and, and but that's to be expected. Like I said, it's the, it's the first time. This whole week will be the first time they've gone through whatever plays were working that day. You know what I mean? Because install one was Tuesday, first time they worked on those plays. Install two was today, first time they worked on those plays. Install three, is uh, Saturday. That'll be the first time they worked on those, and we'll start repeating. And so. Um, you know, I think the most important thing for those guys is, like I said earlier, like next Tuesday be better than last Tuesday or whatever we're working on. And so, uh, like I said, they've all shown, shown some flashes of some really good things. Uh, I think the most important thing for these guys is going to be to where, you know, they, they, they truly understand it to the point there's no hesitation. Um, there's obviously been some hesitation because it's the first time they've done it, some of it. You know what I mean? And so uh, that's going to be something you have to work out of and where it just becomes second nature, that they're completely confident in it. And, and uh, there's no hesitation. When that happens, I think that the level of play goes up. Um, and, and so, and then the other thing is you just got to be consistent doing it, you know. And so, eliminate hesitation, be more and more consistent every single day. And if we can do those two things, um, we can move the offense. Greg, what have you thought about the running backs so far? Just I thought the running backs have done a really good job. They've had a great, a great two days. And I think uh, one thing I really like about 
all those guys is um, for the most part like they're, they're really disciplined on doing what the coach to do you know and I think coach Scott does a great job emphasizing certain things but like for instance ball security uh, is obviously a huge issue I mean I, I mean in sports but if, if you turn the football over you're gonna lose more games uh, and it's something we've tried to tried to emphasize and, and if you watch those guys carry the ball it's like man that's exactly what we taught you know what I mean being disciplined with the reads I think uh, you know obviously I haven't seen the tape yet from today's practice but you know saw him squirt through on some things um, yesterday or Tuesday we worked on uh, more outside zone today we worked on some more in, like more inside zone but you know on, on Tuesday I thought they did a really good job same sort of deal like just like a quarterback or running back has reads and I thought they did a really nice job of, of seeing that being disciplined on it and, and hitting the ball and hitting it where it's supposed to hit now obviously we don't have pads on so the game changes when when, when pads come on uh, but but for two days uh, to, to be in shorts and helmets uh, I think that They've done a really good job, and um, they've made a lot of big plays for us, to be honest with you. Like, Coach Scott was selling quarterbacks in pre-practice, probably trying to get them throwing the ball more. But he said every time the running backs touched the ball, it was an efficient play last yesterday, just so y'all know, or whatever. you know. So um, I think some of that's him trying to uh, campaign for some more balls to the running backs, which is uh, every position coach probably. But uh, they, they have done a good job. And if you really think about it, you know, when he said it, you know, I was, I was thinking, like, man, that's, that's a good campaign message there. But then – you know, you kind of start thinking about it, and it's kind of true. It seems like every time they touch the ball, something positive that did happen. Uh, they they caught the ball pretty well out of the backfield today. I think they might have had one drop, but other than that, I think they they, they caught the ball well out of the backfield. When when they did catch the ball, um, they they were effective with the football in their hands. And so, uh, I like those guys. They do things right. They're very coachable. Uh, they just they just put their head down and work. And uh, because of that, I think they're going to be really good. Uh, they, they do what their coach to do every time as hard as they can do it. And, and if you show up with that mentality, like I said, I think that you have a chance to be really good no matter what position you are. When do you need to see timing improve? After you install? Or is that just an evolution of the more reps you get? Well, I think obviously the more reps you get, the better the timing, the more and more you'll be on the same page. But uh, that's why we work those drops over there. Like we were talking about earlier, like what are you working on with it, with that? Like those drops have to time up with those routes. And, and – um, that's why we do them so much, and I think that's that's the most important thing. Like, if you take the proper drop, the ball will come out on time. If the receiver runs the the, the proper route and you take the proper drop, like we're designing this play for this to work. You know what I'm saying? We're designing the play for your feet to time up with that route, and so the timing should be there. And that's why I said earlier, like you have to be consistent with your feet and you have to be disciplined with your drop. And, and same thing with the route; they have to be extremely disciplined with the route because. You know the plays based, especially the first read. Obviously, like as you get through progressions, it's it's a little different. But like first read or two is based off that quarterback's. You know the quarterback's drop is based on whatever the route is, and so that's why we're so uh, try to be so anal or so disciplined about making sure their feet are right because uh, it, it's hard enough. And, and I've said this lots of times, but it's hard enough to get everything right. Like get the cut. You know get get a receiver to run the perfect route. You know get it, get open on the route. Get the protection right. The, the play can't go bad because we were undisciplined with our feet at the quarterback position, you know, and so that's why we're so hard on them or so why we emphasize that so much is because when things go right, we get the protection, we get a good coverage, we get the route open. We can't miss it or because we were late with our feet or because we were, we were bad with our feet. Um, and so, you know, I expect that the timing to be better, you know, I mean, day one, I expect the timing to be right if, if you did, if you take the proper drop, if you were good with your feet. But like I said, obviously, the, the, the more reps you get in, in any scheme and the more reps you get with, with certain players, uh, the more the chemistry and the more you, you have a feel for that. But, uh, again, I think a lot of that comes down to just being disciplined with your feet and if you, as the quarterback and at the receiver position. And if you do the, those two things well, uh, the routes should time up pretty well. So that's muscle memory? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and that's what we talk about. Like Everything we do is habit-forming. Um, and... and uh, so that's why we're going to do it every single day. We're going to work, you know, we're going to do different drills every day, but every day we're going to work drops, you know what I mean? Because that has to be right. We can't be bad with our feet. <laughs> How did you work with the other offensive coaches to get them familiar with your terminology, the things that you were changing and stuff? Was that meetings? You said, here you go, let's get together. Yeah. What was that process? Lots of meetings. <laughs> and, uh, you know, lots of meetings and watching tape together. And, and, you know, like I said when I first got here, like if you trace the two systems back far enough, uh, you know, we come from the same tree. And so I think there's a uh, guys that have been here that have been in the system. Uh, they have a, they have, you know, Coach Scott, Coach Reagan, Coach Moore. They have all been here. You know what I mean? And so 
some of it's just, hey, this is what we call it there. Like, let's figure out what's best to call whatever. You know what I mean? And and I changed some of the stuff to what they called it. You know what I mean? And then changed, you know, some of the stuff that we called it at SC is different than what we're calling it here because it's like it's the same play, just a different word. Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, I can learn that. Um, but there's other things that didn't matter. So, like, we changed some terminology or maybe the way we run a route or something like that. Hey, this is what we're going to – this is – I still feel strongly about this. This is how we're going to do it, you know. And so um, – a lot of it was just meeting, watching tape, comparing our tape, you know, because, okay, this is a very similar play. How did y'all do it? How do we do it? What's the best way to do it? Let's figure that out and go, you know. Um, and so that was kind of the, the process leading up to spring. And now, uh, you know, like, like today, for instance, you know, I know there's there's going to be a lot I could just tell on the field. Like one of the routes that we were throwing today uh, had, had like a post on it and, and the timing wasn't right. And I think some of it was footwork, some of it was the way we are running that route. Well, Sometimes it takes, you know, running the route and making this – messing it up and, and the kids seeing it on tape, like, hey, we changed it to this for this reason. You know what I mean? And when they see that on tape, I think that's why next week when you should go out there, it's like, oh, now I understand a little bit because that quarterback needs you right here and that's just a little tweak we made or whatever the case may be. So um, we'll make those corrections today. And like I said, hopefully next Wednesday or next Thursday be better than we're today. Uh, but that's kind of the way that worked out. You know, I think that that's kind of the hard part right now is because, you know, it's the first time you're doing it. You're so early in the, early in the process, you know, you want to get the most basic stuff in early on. And, and we've run a little two-back with those guys, you know, a couple – some reps of that. But I do think as you evolve, um, whether that be this spring or maybe this fall, because like you said, we, we do have a, a deep running back room, you, we could get creative with, with the way we use those guys, you know. And so um, – but right now we're just trying to stick – you know, very base install, just so they can get a, a better grasp of the offense. Uh, and once once you feel really comfortable that hey, they have the base stuff down, well now you kind of now you kind of branch out and get creative with it. But um, it is something like I said, we run a little two back stuff. Uh, the 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 more and more we rep it, uh, just rep the offense in general. I think the more we kind of expand on it and and have fun with those guys and use them in different spots. But uh, you know, like you said, it's it's. Right now, I think the most important thing is we got to be able to execute the most basic stuff, and and uh, if we can do that, then we can evolve. But until we can do that, I think you got to keep working on it. You have a lot of new guys, but you do have an offensive line returning intact. Yeah. How does that play into your your preparation and your development with your offense? You know, having an experienced offensive line is huge. If you if you can, you know, if you look at the last two Super Bowl teams. Uh, they, they 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 won Super Bowls based because they had a good offensive or defensive line. You know what I mean? Like two years ago, the Chiefs. I mean, the two years ago, the Bucks. Like they won that Super Bowl, but that's because that defensive line controlled that game. You know what I mean? This past year, the Rams. You can. I think it's pretty unarguable. Had the best defensive line in the game, but they also had a really good offensive line. Like if you can be great on that side of the ball, you can cover up a lot of holes on on other positions. And or if you can be great up front, you can cover up holes other in other spots. And so I have an experienced offensive line that's as good as they are. Is going to make everyone better. Uh, I think it's going to really help, especially with having some young quarterbacks help their development because they can stand in that pocket a little longer and have a cleaner pocket. Uh, you know, like I said, day one we ran outside zone and I expected it to be a disaster with no pads on, and we actually get hit some big runs. Um, but a lot of that's because that offensive line's played together. They know what they're doing together. They work together well and, and created some stuff for us. And then, like I said, the running backs did what they were supposed to do. And so, um, being good up front, you know, I think if you could start a team. It, Almost anyone would probably start it with a quarterback, you know, and, and, and an offensive line. And so um, having that foundation is huge for us. And so they're going to really help us. Uh, I think that they can, like I said, get us out of some trouble when we need to lean on those guys. If we got to run the football or whatever the case may be, uh, whatever it takes, having those guys is going to help. And it gives you a chance, like I said, you, you need some protection, they can usually do it. You need a little extra time, I think you got a chance to have it because you got an experienced offensive line. Like I said, if you got to run the ball, uh, you're in a situation where you have to run the football. Everyone knows you're going to run it. It seems like they've still been able to, to create create lanes and create movement. 
because they they're working together well and they've worked together well in the past and you can't expect you can't replace experience so uh, being good up front makes everyone else's job a whole lot easier and so having that group together has has been fun for two days and hopefully this spring they just continue to grow uh, because like i said you can't replace real reps and so getting them more and more 15 more practices together hopefully hopefully makes them even that much better so going into this fall um, we really have a special group up there challenges of playing a, a young quarterback including true freshmen you've done that in the past so what are those challenges uh you, you know like you said i've it seems like i've had a lot of true you know i had mason fine played as a true freshman keaton slovis played as a true freshman last year jackson dark played as a true freshman so um I haven't coached that long, and I've had a lot of true freshmen play at times. But um, you know, I think I think there's there's things you have to live with if that's the case. You know, I mean, you have to understand like they're gonna make some mistakes. And and uh, Slovis was probably the best as far as that goes. As far as like he he just understood it as a true freshman better than any true freshman I've had. But you know, like Mason Fine, for instance, um, there were times he was all over the place, but he still gave us the best chance to win. And and he made some mistakes that you wanted to strangle him on, but at the same time, like you have to understand, if you're playing a true freshman, that's going to happen at times. And Jackson was the same way this past year; did a lot of great things. Uh, but there's times where he makes a mistake that, if it was a year later, he probably didn't make. And uh, like you have to understand that, and so you have to coach a little different. The other thing, like with Mason and with Jackson, with Keaton, we didn't do it as much just because Keaton, like, he really did. Like he he grasped it as well as anyone I've ever seen at that age. But uh, with with Mason and with Jackson, like. There may be less volume in when those guys are in. You know what I mean? As far as less offense in, and that's okay uh, because you got to do what they can execute at a high level. And so I think that those are some of the things that you have to balance when you're playing a really young guy is, hey, what can he do? What can he execute? And if he gives us the best chance to win, then we better call what he can execute, not what we think not necessarily just what, <laughs> well, this play should be good. Well, if he can't execute, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And so. I think as a as a offensive staff and as a play car, you kind of have to understand that going in. If you have a young guy, and if he can execute it all, then call it all. If he can't, you better call what he can execute, uh, and understand if you don't, you better you're gonna have to live with some mistakes.